afternoon, everybody. I'm Lori with Behavior Education. I am here with TC from Reach Out Reptiles. Today is Sunday, April 19th, 2020. Welcome to another edition of Super Dwarf Sunday. In today's edition of Super Dwarf Sunday, we're gonna talk about enrichment for your super dwarf, your other reptile, or any snake species that you might have. We're gonna use TC as an example and so I'm going to ask that you be creative and whatever snake species you're dealing with or whatever species of reptile you have, you need to brainstorm, be creative, and think about what type of enrichment items would be appropriate for that species. Remember that there may also be some behavioral variation within a specific species. So while my super dwarf, Tau Ceti, likes to climb and likes to swim, it doesn't mean that your super dwarf will. You might have to do some preference testing to find these things out. The Association of Zoos and Aquariums recognizes five enrichment categories. Those enrichment categories are cognitive, food, physical, sensory, and social. We're gonna go through one a week for the next few episodes of Super Dwarf Sunday. And I thought for this first edition of our enrichment series that we would start with something simple and easy for everybody to understand, and that is physical enrichment. Physical enrichment is literally anything you can do to get your snake to move. It's any type of place you can take your snake to, thing you can put your snake on, enclosure furnishings that you can put in your snake's enclosure that make your snake move, that will stimulate physical activity in your animal. I'm surrounded by a few examples that we have here for Tau Ceti. To my right is one of our activity stations that has different shelves. So he has different levels to climb on. And each of those levels even has some different activities that should stimulate physical movement from him. So we have hamster tubes, we have perches, we have a box with a hole in it. Down here we have a cat toy. You can virtually put anything on it. As long as your snake is not stressed about these enrichment items, they're a great way to stimulate movement from your animal. Behind me, we've got our snake tree or our climbing tree that we put the snakes on and allow them to climb. And then over here to my left is the item that you saw in last week's Super Dwarf Sunday. It's a wooden bench that we use to sit on. We use just as you would any wooden bench but we've taken some branches from outside and we can set them on the bench when we want to use it as a climbing item for Tau Ceti or any of our other snakes. If you're able to allow your snake outside of his or her enclosure without them becoming stressed, and I will include our cheat sheet for stress behaviors in the description of this video. It'll be a link that you can follow, but you can also find it on my blog page or on the homepage of my website. You wanna make sure that your snake is staying in the green zone as they're enjoying their enrichment activities. If they get in the yellow zone, which means they're moderately stressed and they stay there for any length of time or they escalate to the red zone, then you need to stop the activity and have them do something else or take them back to a safe location where they feel relaxed. A few yellow zone behaviors are going to be normal the first time that they encounter a novel enrichment item and their behavior should subside within a few minutes. They should relax and then start to use the enrichment item in a relaxed fashion. And if that's not happening over a few minutes or if they escalate their stress level, then obviously you wanna stop. So options for if your snake is able to come out of their enclosure would be some of the things that I've already shown you. But if you don't have specific objects for physical enrichment, you can allow your snake to climb around furniture as long as it's safe, to climb on the floor as long as it's safe. You can take your snake outside and allow it to climb in trees or the grass as long as it is safe to do so and your animal is supervised and your animal is not exhibiting undue stress from that experience. If you have fossorial species or terrestrial species, some good enrichment for them are to place them in a sandbox or like one of those small kiddie pools with some type of substrate in it or some type of items in it that is different from the substrate in their normal enclosure and allow them to burrow to their little heart's content. 
I call it a burrowing box and we use one for our western hognose snake. I use a tub for her. So I just have a big tub for her that I put substrate in that she's able to use for burrowing and it's different than her normal substrate. And I set her loose in that box and she'll burrow sometimes for a couple of hours before she tires and is ready to come out. If you are fossorial or terrestrial snake, or even if you have a super dwarf that spends a lot of time on the ground and seems to like to burrow, but they don't like to come out of their enclosure, there's no reason why you can't put a burrowing box in their enclosure with different substrate in it than what is their normal substrate. And you can use natural substrates, but you could also put things in there like crumpled up paper, piles of leaves, just anything that's going to give that snake an opportunity to root around and burrow. If you have an aquatic species or a semi-aquatic species, or just a super dwarf like mine that likes to swim, obviously a swimming pool or some container they can use as a swimming pool is going to be a good enrichment item for them. And it's going to stimulate physical exercise and physical activity. With aquatic snakes that spend maybe 100% of their time already in the water, you can add things to the water environment that will stimulate the snake to move around from one area to the other. And so now that we've gone over all of the ways that your snake can enjoy enrichment outside of their enclosure, let's go take a look inside TC's enclosure and see if you can pick out items within his enclosure that will work for physical enrichment. Remember, physical enrichment's primary purpose is to stimulate your snake to move. It's to stimulate physical activity. Now understand, many of the items you're seeing and some of the things you may see in TC's enclosure could overlap with some of those other enrichment categories and could be combined with some of those other enrichment categories. That's okay. In fact, that's great. The more things an item of enrichment can stimulate your snake to do other than just sit is good for your snake because snakes that are more physically fit more mentally fit are going to have better welfare they're going to live longer and if you're breeding your snakes they're probably going to have a greater reproductive capacity if they're fit then if they're not fit <laughs> i lost tc tc has chosen out of these three enrichment items to use the branches that he saw for the first time last week that's great i'm going to let him climb around on these for a few minutes and then we'll go and we'll take a look at his enclosure. Just to review the five enrichment categories, they are cognitive enrichment, food enrichment, physical enrichment, which is what we're talking about today, sensory enrichment, and social enrichment. C and I are back next to his enclosure and as I put TC away or as I allow him to go back into his enclosure if he chooses, we're going to take a look at his enclosure furnishings and I want you to think about what is inside his enclosure that could be considered physical enrichment. What are some things inside Tau Seti's enclosure that stimulate his physical activity? So on this end of the enclosure, I see a few things right off the bat. What do you guys see? I see a shelf that encourages him to move from the lower level of his enclosure to a higher level, so it encourages climbing. I also see a perch that encourages him to climb on it, coil physically around it. I see a log here that's hollow, and that encourages him to move 
into one side of the log and out the other side. Now let's look here on this end of the enclosure. Obviously he has a swimming pool and that clearly encourages him to swim. He does not require much encouragement to swim. If the swimming pool was not in here, he would be swimming in his water dish. As you see, he's physically moving from one end of his enclosure to the other right now by climbing across his ledges and a perch. Now let's look at the other side of his enclosure where he pretty much has the same things to encourage movement. He's got a perch and he's got shelves. But something else that you might not have considered that encourages movement from one end of his enclosure to the other are heat gradients or temperature gradients. So this is the warm end of his enclosure. This end has the lamp. When he wants warmth, obviously this is where he should be. And when he wants coolness, he's gonna go to the other end of the enclosure. And so just moving from one end to the other is physical activity. There are lots of other items that could be placed in here and considered physical enrichment. You guys, should be brainstorming for your own snakes and other reptiles, what you can do both within their habitats and without to stimulate physical movement. What can you think of that could fit into that physical enrichment category? Everybody, thank you so much for watching and joining us today for another edition of Super Dwarf Sunday. I hope that your wheels are spinning and that you're brainstorming some fabulous enrichment ideas to increase your snake's physical activity. I have been Lori with Behavior Education. This has been Tau Seti from Reach Out Reptiles. Until next time, when you join us for another episode of Super Dwarf Sunday, Always remember to be kind and love your animals. What are you doing? I love you, TC. Mm -hmm. You're a good boy. You sure are. You're a very good boy. Yeah, mommy loves you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs>